Ladies and gentlemen, if you go to Twitter right now, Rosalind Akombe is trending at number one. If you scroll further, you'll find Samuel Kivitu also trending. You go further, you'll also find Wafula Chebukati trending. Not left out on the trend list is Nabi, not left out there, and also the summer arrest, which is also trending. Basically, people are advising Ruto to arrest Uhuru Mugai Kenyatta. But why is Rosalind Akombe trending at number one? That's the question. Rosalind Akombe today reacted angrily and blasted William Ruto over his remarks on the plot to abduct Wafula Chibukati. In this video, I want us to look at why Rosalind Akombe is actually angry. But before we do all those, in case you are watching this channel for the first time, please take a second or two, click that subscribe button, so that next time we produce a video like this, YouTube will automatically notify you. And to the subscribers, I want to continue thanking you guys for your continued support. Because without that support, this channel cannot be where it is. Now, I want us to begin this video by going through Rosalind Akombe's uh, Twitter handle, which is actually verified. For those who follow the politics of this country, Wafula Chebukati's term in office came to an end the other day. And yesterday, finally, William Ruto paraded Wafula Chebukati as if he was still the chairperson of IBC. And this is what Akombe posted a few days ago. That uh, everything has an end. Eventually. So for me this was a coded message from Akombe to Wafula Chebukati. That everything has an end. And if you go through this tweet, the responses were very funny. Actually, by the, this time, this particular tweet has already been viewed by 529,000 Kenyans. And that's massive. Almost half a million Kenyans have viewed this particular tweet. Kabogo there is saying everything, indeed everything. If you go through this, you realize that... Uh, the, the tweet actually elicited a lot of reaction from Kenyans based on where they come from or where, whoever they support. But why is Rosalind Akombe bitter and blasting Ruto? The same yesterday, this is what she posted. That interesting that we can seek public inquiries on allegations of murder but not on actual murders. So basically, William Ruto caused a huge storm yesterday in this country when he suggested that Uhuru Mugai Kenyatta attempted to abduct Wafula Chebukati. And Kenyans were really like, why would William Ruto know those who attempted to abduct Wafula Chibukati. And why is the Wafula Chibukati abduction so dear to Ruto? Well, we know that there is an issue of Wafula Chibukati. Because William Ruto made it very clear that they are going to, to set up a public inquiry into the events at the Bomas of Kenya. Why do you think Rosalind Akombe was that, issued that statement? Let us go back a bit. A few days to the 2017 general election, Chris Musando was murdered. He was murdered because there were individuals who were keen on ensuring that Jubilee government retained their seat. Basically, they were keen on locking Raila Amolodinga. And the person who was uh, the problem was Chris Musando. The truth of the matter is that Chris Musando, just like many other Luos, decided that for him to get a job at IEBC, he used the name Chris Chege. 
So every other person never thought that Musando was actually a Luo. They realized that when it was already late. So he was murdered. And Chris Musando was a very close associate or close friend to Rosalind Akombe. And the elections were conducted. The courts nullified them. Then there was a rerun. But a few months, a, a few days, a few weeks to the rerun, Rosalind Akombe went to Dubai to check on the, the progress of the printing of election materials. She never came back. She, re she actually resigned from IBC. And I remember her statements, which she issued while there. Let me just play for you this uh, clip by Citizen TV, because it's a bit comprehensive, so that you can understand why Akombe is better. And she had to blast William Ruto. And I'm going to give you four reasons just after listening to this. She had only served at the commission for nine months until her surprise resignation on the morning of 18th of October 2017 from New York, USA. Thirteen days later, she sent a 93-page report to her former boss of Fuller Chibukati, calling it End of Assignment Report. In the document, Akombe gave a detailed account of what, in her view, held the commission that adversely affected the credibility of the 2017 general election and repeat presidential election. Top on the list were key procurement decisions made especially on the election technology and ballot papers as well as the power conflicts between IABC Chair Wafule Chibukati and CEO Ezra Chiloba. For instance, Akombe accuses Chiloba of keeping commissioners and the chair in the dark on procurement contracts that were only communicated to them last minute when they had no choice but to approve. She says that Chiloba and ICT Director James Muhati conspired to handle election technology procurement in secrecy, adding that the dominance of Safran OT Morpho, the company that supplied Kimskits and facilitated the electronic results transmission, ought to be investigated on their role in the 2017 election. She specifically points out to the events at the bombers of Kenya on the night of August 8th when presidential results ceased to stream at 8.30 for three hours with no explanation from IABC staff and Safran Otimo for consultants. She wonders why the margin between Kenyatta and Odinga remained consistent after resumption of transmission. And she says, quote, It is such situations that will forever leave questions in my mind of what actually happened on August 8th. The former commissioner further accusing Chiloba of scheming to have his way majorly on procurement decisions. She specifically accused Chiloba and senior IABC staff of deliberately delaying the procurement of ballot papers despite the first case against IABC decision being filed in February 2017. She says that Chiloba ensured no progress was made until there was little time left forcing the commission to settle on direct procurement with a tender going to Dubai-based Al Gurea publishing and printing firm despite objection by the opposition alliance NASA. Now from that particular clip, it's clear that Akombe left IBC and there are certain things which she will write a book about in future. And I remember at some point she accused uh, Chiloba and Chiloba telling her that our silence is not your license. I don't know how that story ended up to now. But why would Akombe get angry with Roto for suggesting to come up with the commission of inquiry over attempted abduction of Ofola Chibukati? Number one, Akombe is a former insider of IBC. And as a former insider, Akombe knows a lot. So when William Ruto opened his mouth and ventured into issues and trying to make Wafolachi Bukati appear as a saint, Akombe was shocked because she had actually celebrated the fact that Wafolachi Bukati's term in office came to an end. She was shocked. And because she's an insider, or was an insider, she knows so many things. And I think that is also something we should worry William Ruto and his team. Because William Ruto is planning uh, to use, to, to sanitize Wafulachi Bukati. He's keen on that. But as long as people like Akombe are outside, she must be very, very, I mean, William Ruto must be very, very careful. So that's number one. Number two, there's a possibility that Akombe is yet to forgive those who 
eliminated uh, Chris Musando. Chris Musando was a very close ally of Akombe. In fact, the moment Chris Musando was uh, eliminated, that marked the end of Akombe at IBC. So there's a possibility that Akombe might be planning revenge on behalf of the friends, Chris Musando. And how can she revenge? She will be revenging by countering anything which William Ruto will be planning in favor of, of, of Fulache Bukati. Number three, Akombe is also annoyed by the move to make Wafulache Bukati a saint. You know, William Ruto and Kenya Kwanza are trying to create a saint out of Wafulache Bukati. That will not happen. People like Akombe are not going to allow it to happen in their eyes. And lastly, I think it also brings back the memory of 2017 election to someone like Akombe. Remember, Akombe had a good job, came back into the country to help IBC. She had to leave. If she had not left, she would not have had a name by now. Of course, because she left, she managed to secure another job. But the fact is that memory, the memory of 2017 election, is something which will not leave people like Akombe. So when you try to sanitize their chairman, it's a big problem. Because at some point, I think Akombe was also very clear that Chibukati was under siege. <laughs> so let us wait and see how things are going to unfold. And by the way, how do you think Uru should... Uh, respond to Ruto over this particular allegation. Because at some point, William Ruto accused Uhuru Kenyatta of planning to eliminate his children. Uhuru is still quiet. Enjoy your day.